whether you love or hate Eddie Jones, you have to respect him. He has been instrumental in so many teams uh, over the past couple of years, and the results actually speak for themselves. Eddie started out playing for Randwick Rugby Club, and he played there from 1981 to 1991. And he actually amassed a total of 210 appearances for the club. He also had short stints with the Leicester Tigers in 91-92 and played for New South Wales for, uh, from 1987 to 1989. Since 1994, he has ever, ever been actively coaching. He started off uh, coaching at Randwick and then went on to Tokai University, then Suntory San Goliath, and he had stints with the Brumbies, with the Queensland Reds and, and with Saracens. He actually filled a couple of different roles during this time and it included head coach, an assistant coach, and technical advisor for some of these teams. In 2001, he got his first taste uh, of international coaching during his first stint with Australia, and that one ran from 2001 till 2005. If you would look at his win record of 56%, you wouldn't be too impressed with that, uh, but, and he won only 33 out of 59 games. But you need to kind of see how things evolved for that Australian team during that time. While he was running the show, they actually won a Bledisloe Cup, and they drew another one, and they made it to all the way to the 2003 final. But there they met uh, rampant uh, Johnny Wilkinson, and we all know sadly how that ended for Australia. In 2007, he stepped into the technical advisor role with the Springboks, and at that World Cup, uh, he actually ended up with a, a World Cup medal, so or the World Cup gold medal for that matter. So yeah, I think he had a fairly positive impact. The first of his most impressive um, two stints as um, coach was when he took over the job at Japan in 2012, and he was there till 2015. During the time when he was coaching this team, he, they actually caused that massive upset in the 2015 World Cup when they beat South Africa, which us as South Africans are never going to forget. Um, but what was more impressive is that uh, during his stint, Japan won 32 out of 45 games. And they had a win percentage of 71% while he was coaching them. After the World Cup, he took over a broken England team. That England team had suffered the humiliation of not even getting out of the pool stages at the World Cup that they hosted in 2015. So uh, when Eddie took over, he had a massive job to do. Things, however, turned around very quickly. Uh, in 2016, uh, they had a massive year, and it was one of the three times uh, during the next couple of years with 2017 and 2020 that they actually won the Six Nations. In 2016, however, they also got the Grand Slam. So it was an impressive start to his uh, coaching career with England. Uh, they also had a bit of a very dominant run just overall, and when they got to the 2019 World Cup, they were in great shape, and they made it all the way to the final where they were pummeled in a very friendly way by South Africa. Fast forward all the way to 2023, and he's the head coach of Australia again, but he's only been in charge for a handful of games. Uh, so far, it's been horrible for Australia, but they are slowly adapting to the way that he coaches. And I think uh, as they keep improving, he's going to be uh, he's going to be delivering a, a, an Australian team that is going to be a lot better than what you see at the moment. He's also been able to uh, employ the services of Steve Hansen for a very short little stint, just to make sure that his coaching is is up to par. So overall, I think Eddie is going to do well and Australia is going to have a decent run. It helps that they've got an easier draw, but yeah, with Eddie there, they've got the best possible chance to go deep in the tournament.